Okay, this is episode 12. This is going to be about structures, or data structures, or structures for short. Um, so to make a structure, you do not want to make it inside a sub. You just put it inside the class or module somewhere. Um, so I'm going to make a structure by typing on structure. Then you need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it person. So what a structure is, it's a way of making your own data type made up of other data types. So I'm going to make a variable, so dim person1 as person. So I'm making um, a person, I'll call him Bob actually, dim Bob as person. Okay, so a person needs to have certain traits. So first thing I'm going to give him dim name as string. So then the first name will be stored in the name. So then I can say Bob, okay, maybe I shouldn't have, I should call him back person one, <laughs> in hindsight. Uh, person one, so person one dot name is equal to Bob. So there. Um, now if you want to give some other information, dim last, name as string and then person one dot last name is equal to um Bobbington. So Bob Bobbington, that's his name. Um and then you give him an age, dim age as integer. Um is equal to so then person one dot age is equal to forty five. So Bob Bobbington is age forty five. So let's do a console dot read line here just so it doesn't close. Now let's say if you wanted to display it, what you can do is do console dot write line uh person one dot name um, and space and person one dot last name and that will work but it's not very efficient um, so let's say if you had another person called person two um, like this so person two and now I'm gonna use box selection here just to change this by the way box selection if you hold shift and alt you can do box selection <laughs> so you can change multiple things like at once which I just did there I can like change you know it's very useful um, so person1 person2.name is equal to Tom Tommington um, and aged 20 um, so I've got people here it's probably more efficient for me to put this there. Um, so I've got the p people and I've got the data. And then if I wanted to write out Tom's information, I have to do this, change this to two, to two. And it'll work, but it's not too efficient. Um, so what you can do, you can make a function within a structure. But note, you can only use the information from within the structure in the structure. You can't even use global variables. Uh, you have to use only information within a structure. One other thing you need to know is a structure, you can't have uh, initial values, so test won't work, yeah. Um, so with a structure, you need to have it, no initial values, and if you are going to use a variable, then you need to make sure it's a variable declared within a structure. That being said, I can say uh, make a structure called display info. You can still pass parameters into the function. Uh, there's no reason why you can't and you get an end function here so then I can say return I'll just get this to be info because it's not actually displaying it uh, function info then I'll just return name and space and last name and space um, comma space and aged and age and I guess I can say here at the start um, name and then 
like that. So now I've made a function which will get the info. Remember, I can only use variables from within the structure. So then, what I can do, make it a bit more efficient, I can say uh, person one dot info. Put a dot there, and then person two dot info. Now that's starting to look a bit more efficient, and yeah, so that works. So that's a function. You can also do a sub within it. So sub, well, you can do you can do most things. Apparently, you can do a class within. Okay. Um, so you can do a sub so sub um birthday and then I'll just say age plus equals one so then you can say um Bob has a birthday Bob dot birthday and that will not Bob person one and that will increment their age so now if I run it you'll see that Bob's now age 46 so yeah that's function sub so used within a structure by the way, one thing about structures are is they're like a 2d array except the benefit is other than the fact you have functions and subs you can have different data types with a 2d array you could have information like this but you'd have to have it all of one data type so you couldn't increment the age then so yeah and also you can put subs and functions which is very useful um, so we've got person 1 as person, person 2 as person, what if I found person 3 dim person 3 as person and this is starting to become a bit tedious now so what we can do is make an array of the type structure so I can set changes to people and then make it an array of people um, like that. So then I can say 0 to 2. And then I can say people 0. Um, now doing it this way is still not very efficient um, but it's it's better because now it's all sorted in one array. The benefit would be when you're displaying it so I could then do a for loop so for each item in people changes to people no item uh, there so now although the information entering is the same the um oh I put an extra person in that wasn't needed. Uh, although the inf inputting is the same the uh, thingy would be different and for some reason that's gone to my desktop <laughs> um, and yes that is Cthulhu he's pretty cool. So if you did do another way and you wanted to like read in information or get it from a data file or something then you could use a for loop to increment through that and that would be the most efficient way of dealing with uh, data like this well at least on this kind of small scale anyway um. Thank you.